What's up, Rage Nation? How y'all doing? This is Alex. You're watching the Rage and Owner Review, and I apologize. I haven't made a video in a long time. Just got a little bit busy, but now I'm back, and that is all that matters because I'm here to make more videos and movie reviews for you guys. The movie I'm going to be reviewing for you today in this video will be Looper. It is a movie that I saw two weekends ago, and it is a time travel movie directed by Ryan Johnson. And the story is... It's kind of complicated, but let me just do my best to explain it to you. The year is 2074 and time travel has been invented, but it's outlawed. And the only people that use this time travel technology is the mob. And what they use it for is to dispose of bodies. They send the bodies to 30 years earlier to the year 2044. And then they have these assassins called loopers. And then they're waiting at this time portal and they shoot whoever appears from the year 2074. That is what they do. And the main reason why they do this is because in 2074, humans are all traceable. They all have some sort of tracking device, so it always leads back to whoever killed them. So you can't just like throw a body into the river and all that stuff. Now, the reason why someone would want to become a looper is because you're paid in riches. That is your contract. You shoot whoever appears in front of that time portal, even if it is yourself. And the only reason why that would happen is because 30 years later, the contract for a looper expires and it expires because the mob wants to cut off any ties with these loopers. That way the killings don't trace back to them. And that is the big profound statement that the director has presented to the audience. If you were presented lots of riches and living the good life, would you carry out this task? even though it would lead to your ultimate and early demise. Is that worth dying for? Or a better question yet is, what is worth dying for? And I want you to remember this question because what Ryan Johnson has done is he's taken, you know, a, a popcorn movie, a, a, a high concept science fiction movie, and just turn it into poetry in a way. And it deals with life and death and the greater good, or otherwise known as the ultimate sacrifice. Joseph Gordon-Levitt plays a looper named Joe. I'm gonna call him Young Joe. And then Bruce Willis plays his older self, which I'm gonna call Old Joe. So if you've seen the trailers, you know that Joseph Gordon-Levitt eventually has to kill his older self. He doesn't end up doing it. And then Old Joe is on the run. But we're left to figure out why he's on the run. And while the story does have some pretty interesting characters, I think it really all comes down to the story. And the story, in my opinion, I find is very is very interesting and very original because he's taking this vast time travel concept, but he's narrowed it down to this little thing, and that is the concept of loopers. I know there are movies out there where people travel back in time and they try to kill a political figure and maybe that'll change the course of how society will run. But looper is not like that at all. I find it is a lot more intelligent than that. And I don't want to spoil anything, but let me just say that when old Joe comes into 24 44, it's a catalyst for a whole bunch of events that makes things very poetic for both characters. Now there are a lot of great characters that are played by some great actors here, but let me talk about some weak characters. <laughs> Paul Dano's character, Seth, he's the character that starts raising questions and he says that they're coming after me and now they're gonna be coming after you. And we've seen this type of character before and Paul Dano plays it kinda weak. And then there's another character played by Noah Segan, his character's name is Kid Blue. And you would think that he's someone who holds some sort of significance in the story because he always feels like he's so determined to bring down young Joe. But at the end of it all, he's really, really insignificant. Like, he really adds nothing to the story. If you cut out his character completely, the movie would still be the same. And the reason why I'm pointing out the weaknesses in this movie is because I had some pretty high expectations for this movie. Like I said before, everybody's giving it 9 out of 10. Well, I appreciate that it did have an original concept, but there are some things that really didn't work for me. Another thing that I have to point out that I thought was a weakness in the story was why is there this emphasis on the use of drugs? Like, I felt that that did not need to be there at all. All these loopers, they live the good life, so they're always like partying with alcohol and drugs, and eventually the drugs get the best of them at one point in the movie. I thought that the drug use was going to play a more significant part in the movie, but really it amounted to nothing. So I just felt that these are details that could be left out. And another detail that I felt that could have been left out of the movie was the inclusion of these characters who are TKs. I'm not gonna tell you what that is, but if you've seen the movie, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Why do they need to be TKs? And what is the purpose of them having the TK ability? Whether or not a so-called somebody in the movie was a TK really does not matter. It provided an interesting element in the movie, but when you really think about it, if you remove the TK element from the movie, it still would have been the same movie. And they could have done something less over the top than having TKs as part of the story. Because if you're gonna have TKs in the story, 
at least explain how they became to be TKs. They never covered that at all. So I felt that that was way too convenient in the writing department. Now I have to comment on some reviewers saying that this is Bruce Willis's best performance to date. Now this is just me and this is just my opinion, but Bruce Willis acting as old Joe in Looper is no different than Bruce Willis being John McClane in the Die Hard movies. I don't think it's that much of a stretch for him because as long as I see Bruce Willis carrying a gun, then I see John McClane. <laughs> But that's just me. So I gotta disagree that this is Bruce Willis's greatest performance to date. Speaking of which, Joseph Gordon-Levitt playing a younger version of Bruce Willis was not assisted by that dreadful makeup. I gotta say that, you know, that's great that they tried to make him look like Bruce Willis. 10% of the time, he did look like Bruce Willis in some certain angles and certain lighting. But 90% of the time, he just looked really, really weird. Like he just looked like he had plastic surgery done on him and I mean it looked like real I mean he looked like a human being he just didn't look like either Bruce Willis or Joseph Gordon-Levitt and what that did for me is was distract me from the movie I just kept on focusing on how weird his makeup looked as opposed to focusing on the dialogue I appreciate that they tried to do this and they really really wanted to make Joseph Gordon look like Bruce Willis and it was a really neat effect but it didn't work for me. Another weakness about the movie is that I felt that the movie's pacing was really off. It was really interesting at the beginning because we're just being introduced to the concept and then it picks up after Young Joe and Old Joe meet each other, but then it really slows down and it just has a lot of exposition, a little bit too much. And then it picks up back again, but then the finale, I felt that it wasn't climactic enough to justify the slow pace in the middle. Now this movie isn't about big spectacle and big action sequences or anything like that. As I mentioned before, like I said, it's very poetic and it's more of a story driven movie than a visually driven movie. So for you to really enjoy this movie, you have to really understand the theme and, and the, the bigger picture and just the whole poetic nature of the story. Now I mentioned some weaknesses about this movie, but this movie does have some really good things about it. And one of them, is this character named Sid, played by Pierce Gagnon. And he's a kid actor, but he's really good. I mean, he really left an impression on me because he really does put on quite a performance. And another thing that I liked about the movie has to do with Ryan Johnson's take on the time travel genre. Everybody knows that when you're dealing with time travel in a movie, there's a lot of what if questions and parallel universes and just you know infinite possibilities of what could happen. Well, Ryan Johnson addresses all that in this really great scene between Young Joe and Old Joe in a coffee shop. And Old Joe says to Young Joe, he says, you know what, I could spend a whole day talking about all the things about time travel and all the, 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 the infinite possibilities and all that stuff, but let's just focus on what's going on right now. And you know what, that is something that is really clever that Ryan Johnson decided to do on his part in telling the story. Because he is right, there are a lot of infinite possibilities and you could spend a lot of time just covering all these, you know, what if questions. So there is some pretty smart storytelling and direction in this movie. The only thing that I felt could have been better was a bunch of characters and the pacing and some story elements that could have been left out and they could have refined the movie a little bit better. I don't give this movie a 9 out of 10 like the critics. I'm going to have to give it a 7.5 out of 10. Ultimately, the story was something that I've never seen before and pretty original and I was quite entertained. In the past, I've seen some movies where I walked out of the theater and then I just went, wow, that was a cool movie. Like, that was awesome. But after finished watching Looper, I walked out of the theater just feeling really awkward because I really didn't know how I felt about the movie. I just felt that that was kind of weird. Anyways, I can't say I can recommend this movie to people who like to turn their brain off and just chew on popcorn while they're watching a movie. It's not that type of movie. This is a movie that is kind of like Inception, but it's not. It wants to be Inception. It's not quite up there. But I have to say that it is a decent attempt at science fiction storytelling, and I will give this movie a 7.5 out of 10. Anyways, stay tuned for my next review, and that is for Taken 2, Mistaken. I'm just kidding. Anyways, that's all I have to say about this movie. If you enjoyed this review, hit that like button. If you want to see more movie news and reviews, hit that subscribe button. If you want to chat more about this movie, log on to Facebook and like the Raging Nation Facebook page. And if you have Twitter, follow me on Twitter at Raging Nation. My name is Alex Yoon. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace. Alex Kurtzman and Roberta Orzi, they're the ones responsible behind producing The Mummy Reboot. And then you have the co-writer of Prometheus, John Spates. He's no 